Hello out there, YouTube land. Welcome to another riveting video starring me, Frank, discussing Sherba Mate, or as some call it in Brazil, or many call it in Brazil, Erva Mate. Um, don't know if I have that pronunciation quite right, but it's spelled differently. Yerba Mate, spelled Y-E-R-B-A, M-A-T-E, versus erva mach, erva, E-R-V-A, and mate is, it, mach is actually spelled the same, I believe, M-A-T-E, but it's pronounced differently. I believe that's the Portuguese pronunciation, since uh, Portuguese, I believe, is the official language of Brazil. I may not have that quite right, but uh, that's what I believe to be true. If I'm wrong, let me know. But uh, anyway, discussing Yerba mate, sherba mate, erba mach, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to go over a few different kinds, and the newest kind that I've tried is a brand called Zimango. I don't know if that's pronounced quite right. Uh, it's uh, X I M A N G O, it's the spelling. It's uh, erba mach from uh, Brazil. Um, it's a lot different. It's a uh, chimarrão. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that quite right either. Um, it's different from the uh, sherba mate that you find in Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, uh, and southern some parts of southern Brazil because it's more powder than anything else. Still has some palos, the twigs in it, to uh, sweeten it up and give it a lighter flavor. But um, anyway, I'm going to start on the three different kinds that I like to discuss today. Um, so that'll be the first thing, is the discussion of the three kinds and a tip that I came up with, figured out on my own, that may or may not work for you in preparing uh, Erva Mach or uh, Shimarau. Um, so, yes, the three different kinds. Um, the first style that I came became familiar with when I started drinking Sherba Mate was um, this uh, typical, let's see here, see it's fairly green in color, kind of pale, uh, kind of has some fairly large leaves, some large twigs or palos, and a little bit of powder. This one is actually um, the Mission Mate from Circle of Drink, comes in a package just like this one. Um, this one's not been opened yet, but uh, this is actually the last little bit from my other one pound bag. Very nice mate. Not an incredibly strong smell, but nice leafy, kind of earthy, it's very slightly smoky, not really smoky uh, smell to it. So that's kind of a standard Argentine, but this one is organic um, and it's very good. One of my favorite mates. Uh, check it out. Go to circleofdrink.com. You can purchase this mate there, and there's a few other kinds there. The the uh, they also just started selling the new Suffolk Lights mate, which is a blended mate with with uh, honey powder. Um, yeah, it's kind of pricey, but here it's really good. So if you want to give that a try and you have the cash, go for it. Uh, that's the first kind. Second kind is a pretty big staple in some parts of. I think it's Uruguay. Um, it's called Canarias. Uh, this is a one kilogram bag, and I've used a little bit of it so far, but not very much. It's pretty good mate. It's a what Dave Mate over at Circle of Drink calls a gaucho cut. It's pretty finely cut, um, as you can kind of see there. Um, pretty finely cut leaves, not a lot of twigs or palos. Um, it has a quite strong nose to it compared to the Mission, and um, it's kind of bolder. It has a, more of a kick to it. Um, some co what might call it kind of smoky, but I don't really want to call it smoky. I'd call it more earthy, leafy, um, kind of green tasting. Almost has a bit of saltiness to it. It's pretty good. Um, my pal uh, Philip Frank, uh, he's. Uh, I have a link to his channel on my main channel page. If you check him out, he has a review of Canarias. That's the second kind. Um, it's called the Gaucho Cut. 
It's a lot finer cut, doesn't have a lot of twigs in it. And then the third kind that I just started checking out, and the first type that I've uh, tried, um, is the Erva Mach uh, Shimarao. It's the traditional Zimango, the Brazilian type. And this type is very, very different. Um, and I'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a sec. Do you see that? See how green that is? It's a very bright green, very finely cut powder, lots of palos, twigs, very white twigs. It's a whole different story. I'm kind of moving my finger around in that stuff. It's very powdery. You can see how that sticks to my finger. A lot of powder. Very, very green. Very, very potent stuff. Has a very strong nose to it too. Um, it's fresher, I guess. Um, that's probably why it's so green. They don't age it. It's basically harvested and then cut up and mashed up into a powder. And there's some smaller leaves in there too, but most of it's powder and a lot of polyps in it too. Um, it's good stuff though. Very good. Um, it's different from any of the other Argentine, Uruguayan, uh, Paraguayan mates because um, it's a shimarao, it's made differently. Um, usually requires a special type of uh, bombisha, they might call it a bomba in Brazil, or maybe they have another name for it. Um, I actually acquired um, a bombilla that was made in Brazil that's a bit longer than most of my other ones. Um, let's see a comparison side by side. Now they're very similar on the bottom. They're both the spoon type um, in that regard. And they're kind of flattened. Kind of see there. Um, but this one's a lot bigger and I believe this is meant for the larger gourds that are often used. Uh, the parangos or um, cuas, I think that's how they're pronounced. The, the gourds that are shaped more like a, like a um, vessel you know, uh, kind of V-shaped. I believe they usually use that type of gourd for a shimarao. Um, so I tried using that, but it's still a little difficult to use that type of bombisha because it's such a fine powder. It's very difficult, at least for someone that's used to making um, an Argentine sherba mate, to go from making that to making a uh, erva match a uh, shimarao. Um, now I've tried it a couple of times with little success. The second time I did a little bit better than the first time with the erva match. Um, and uh, both times I used my standard wooden gourd. It's pretty small, and that might be part of the problem is that they usually use a lot bigger gourds, the natural gourds um, for a, a shimarao. And I tried using this gourd twice or both times. The second times I did a little bit better, but I think I uh, I did better with the Bombisha because I figured out a trick, which I'll talk about here in a sec. But the first time I think I didn't quite prepare it inside the gourd, uh, or the first time I did a little better at preparing it inside the gourd. Um, I've watched other videos on how to prepare a Shimarao with a gourd, and they'll turn it kind of, they usually use a plate to flatten it instead of their hand. Uh, usually because the gourd is a lot bigger too, I think the opening on the gourd is bigger. But I went ahead and used my hand and I kind of started out the way I normally do. I usually turn it upside down completely and shake it a fair amount to get most of the palos, the twigs, to this end, the top, which will become the bottom. And then I kind of turn it sideways into a 45 degree angle and then kind of take it off and, you know, I have the, the sherba there inside the mate. Um, with kind of a hole on the top where you could pour in the water. And I believe with the powdery uh, shimarao erva match, you don't want to shake it quite so much because it's so powdery that the more you shake it, the more compacted it gets. And the more compacted it gets, the more difficult it gets to soak up the water that you pour inside. Um, and also, um, I think it also makes it uh, more difficult when you put the bombisha in. It's more likely to clog the bombisha uh, because um, the water isn't as absorbed so well into the 
into the shirba uh, or the erva. Um, so that's one tip you might want to try uh, when you're preparing the gourd of erva mach shimerao is don't shake it quite so much as you would a um, an er, uh, sherba mate from uh, Argentina or, or one of those other countries or regions. And then the second thing is the uh, bombisha trick that I've kind of figured out. At least it, it worked better for me. Um, I have this uh, spring action or double action type uh, stainless steel bombisha. And what it is is um, there's this uh, pivoting hinge type deal that uh, is spring loaded and it seals the bottom of the bombisha. There's a hole on the bottom and then there's little holes. I don't know if you could see, yeah, you could kind of see those holes uh, cut in the tubing on the bottom of the bombisha there. And um, so when you pull this up, it kind of adds an extra layer of filtering in between the, the holes. And um, the holes are still a bit too big to, um, they would let a lot of the powder through just using it like this. But I had this um, tea bag that I bought. It's um, actually made out of a uh, cloth, uh, what is it called? Um, muslin cloth, I believe is what it is. It's a cotton cloth. Um, that's fairly has quite a few gaps in it. You could almost kind of see through it when you put it up to the light. And um, it was a tea bag, and I kind of cut the tea bag into a square, and I just kind of undid the hinge part, kind of wrapped it around like so, kind of carefully. It's kind of hard to do on camera, and then pushed it down, kind of wrapped it around as best I could and this is difficult to do on camera again <laughs> apologize and eventually got it sealed more or less like that not quite as messy but you get the drift and um, then I you know do the normal thumb seal and slip it down into the gourd and then because it has these uh, these sides here on it when you slip it into the gourd you will wanna twist it like they show in some of the videos so that the um, the metal part is sort of facing the wall of the herva inside the gourd so that when you sip the water the water kinda comes in through these sides and the herva itself doesn't cling to the uh, cloth or the bombisha so much and clog it up and so when you keep refilling the gourd with water um, or the mate um, you want to be careful not to disturb your mountain too much and just kind of let that erva soak up the water each time you fill it and every time you fill it the water will seep up more and more into the erva as long as you don't compact it too much when you're shaking the gourd. At least that's my theory. I'll have to test it out as I use this erva mache a little bit more and more. Well my videos get really long. I wanted this to be less than 10 minutes but almost done anyway moving on to the, the final uh, tip or trick or whatever you want to call it uh, you could also use a little French press I have my little tiny one cup or two cup three cup depending on the size of your cup a uh, little French press here and uh, you could just put in your your mate whatever kind you like and of course if you ever used a French press before or you haven't uh, just slip that in there and just kind of slowly press that down after you've brewed it for however long you like. And usually when I brew my, my mate this way from on occasion is I'll pour in of course the, the leaf itself, the sherba, a little bit of cold water just to soak it up and protect the leaves and then and then I'll add the hot water again not boiling but uh, you know between 60 and 70 or between 160 170 degrees Fahrenheit approximately um, at least that's the temperature I go for some people do hotter but um that's another tip if you'd like to do that that might be easier for the uh, Shimerao in particular since it's so fine so there's there's uh, some discussion on the different types of mate I've tried so far 
And um, the most challenging one is the Chimarau, the Erva Mach, the, the Brazilian kind, but it's also the greenest, the freshest, and uh, probably the most potent because it's so powdery. Just over 15 minutes now, so I guess I'll call it a, uh, a day, at least for this video. I might make another one later. And uh, yeah, sun's finally out today. It's been kind of a cloudy, dreary morning, but day's looking up. Hope you have a good one. Keep spreading the love with or without mate. Be kind to one another. Later.